A row has erupted between the government and former culture secretary Nadine Dorries after she refused to submit the manuscript of her new book about Boris Johnson's downfall for review. The ministerial code states that a draft of any memoir must be submitted before it's published. But Ms Doris's publisher, Harper Collins, says her book does not fall under the memoir category. Oh, I'm so delighted. Former Tory MP, author and talk TV presenter joins us live down the line. Nadine, you little troublemaker, Doris, how are you? I'm fine. I'm looking at a photograph of you. I just <laughs> taking my cuttings out for my column today, yeah. and your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Oh, oh. The one is up from Nicola, but, Amazing. You know. Right, Nadine Doris, I'm going to ask you a very straight question. I know the answer, but I'm going to do it so sarcastically. I'm going to read it. Nadine Doris, why are you refusing to comply with national security guidelines by refusing to submit the manuscript of your book despite the fact that the ministerial code, Ms Doris, requires that former front benchers allow a minimum of three months for officials to examine that manuscript? OK, so I'll just give you a very official response to that. Oh, my God, I've just realised my laundry basket's in view as well. <laughs> um, I'll give you a very official response to that, which is that... And the Radcliffe rules are a set of guidelines. They're not in legislation. They're not in primary legislation. They're not, um, you know, there's no criminal offence committed if you don't abide by them, but they are underpinned by the ministerial code. And the Radcliffe rules are there for former ministers who want to write their memoirs when they leave their office in government. And it applies to those former secretaries of state and ministers who are writing about that particular time when they were in government. Um, it's, they're there to protect issues of national security, government policy, sensitive issues. But under Section 810 of the Radcliffe Rules, it states very clearly that, um, the, that they are for memoirs. So, um, HarperCollins are quite right. This book is not a memoir. It is nothing to do with me. It's not about my time in office. It's not about my time as culture secretary. It's not about government policy. It has nothing to do with me. It is all about internal conservative politics and the internal politics within number 10, which brought down a sitting prime minister. And it's pretty explosive, I think is probably an understatement. Some of the revelations in the book that I know that people in the cabinet office and number 10 will very much do everything they can to prevent that book reaching the point of publication and do everything they can to damage my reputation before we get to November the 9th, which is publication date. So I totally refute, my, my photograph isn't even on the jacket of this cover, by, this book, by the way, which, you know, if it was a memoir, you'd think my photograph would be on it. It's my, my photograph isn't even on it. If it went into Waterstones or any bookshop or Tesco's or any supermarket tomorrow, where would that book go? Would it go with the diaries of David Cameron and, mm. and Boris Johnson when they come out and others? No, it would not it would go somewhere else. It is not a memoir, and it will not be submitted to the Radcliffe Rules. I so can't, not wait. I can't as a, as a, as a massive office. Bojo fan, you know this, I can't bleed and wait to read it. There'll be lots more dirty cannot laundry aired, I'm sure, once this book is <laughs> very good. Oh, Thank you very much. I'm but, done. <laughs> yes, Nadine, I've got, to, I've got to push you on this, though. Your book is called The Plot, The Political Assassination of Boris Johnson. Was there really a plot to remove Boris from his position as PM, or... Was it just simply the case that he was dealt the consequences of his own actions? You're going to have to buy the book, I'm afraid, Nicola. Oh, it's Nadine. Okay. Nadine, come on. But just, just on the surface level here, you, obviously the title there, The Political Assassination, to me, to all intents and purposes, a layperson, Boris Johnson's downfall was a long time coming. And people forget, you know, the very, the very final thing, the straw that broke the camel's back, was the fact that he... he was found to have promoted Chris Pincher, despite the fact that Chris had been investigated for sexual misconduct Nick, Nick, allegations. Nick, 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 I know, and that's what ended his I, career I, I, as PM. I know that, but there's a bigger issue here, and I hope the book deals with it. And but I've said this an about Ma Major, and I've said it about Brown. I do not believe that the majority of people in this country think it is right that somebody could become the Prime Minister of this country unless they've gone and won a general election. Whatever you think of Boris Johnson, he won a landslide majority in 2019 and should have had five years. Rishi Sunak yeah. and all of his cronies did a job and got rid. Now, whether you agree with Boris Johnson or not, the British public voted for him to be our Prime Minister. That's the anger, isn't that, isn't that right, Nadine? 
So here's the point. I come from one of the poorest areas in the country. I think it's about number three in the most deprived areas of the UK, socially deprived areas. And there was one thing I was taught by my late husband, actually. Um, we've known each other, we grew up in the same area as kids. And that was that the only power you have when you come from a background like ours, the only hope that you have is in your vote. In your vote is the power to, to bring about change and therein lies your hope. And that is what democracy in this country is based on. And when that principle is diminished or removed, then we come to a point where we are breaking down what are the norms of our unwritten constitution and where does that take us? And that is the bigger question. We've had two prime ministers now in the Conservative Party while we've been in power who have been put in place with no vote from the people and no vote from the even the members of the Conservative Party. That situation happened with happened twice. It happened most starkly and in the most underhand way with because at least with you know Theresa May there was the process of going through a leadership election. It happened in a way with Rishi Sunak, which broke new boundaries. And I'm afraid they were dangerous boundaries. And you know, Nicola, to your point about Chris Pitcher, Chris Pitcher was part of a process. It was, um, he didn't, actually Bryce didn't promote Chris Pincher, Theresa May did. But it was part of a process, or Theresa May rather rehabilitated Chris Pincher. Mm. There were a, a number of, of things which happened. And, you know, actually, if you were, it's, a, well, actually, I'm not going to go into it. Yeah, you'll, you'll have me here all morning talking about how it happened. But Boris Johnson should still be our prime minister today mm. because he had an 80 seat majority and he got a bigger percentage of the vote share than Tony Blair did in 97. He won a landslide victory. It was a victory where, and this is the principle, does power transfer from the people to Westminster? And that's how we pick our leaders. Or do a few privileged people in Westminster decide who our leaders are? And that, I think, is the fundamental point that needs to be challenged. Nadine, we did a Talk TV punter poll this morning. We asked, how would you vote in a general election? 31% said Labour, 21% said Tory. Could you bring yourself to vote for Rishi Sunak come the general election? Look, I'm not going to go down the road. About that. I got back from Manchester at one o'clock this morning. And what I will say is that there is, um, I think your poll is probably um, reflective of how the MPs that I met and the delegates that I met in Manchester are feeling. It's almost a, it's, or it's game over type. I've never, I've never been in, um, in a conference to such a vibe actually it was very much it's game over and and i think we are you know possibly heading in the direction that your poll would indicate which is very sad really because on the day a no confidence vote was held in boris johnson we were only four points behind since he was removed from power we've been as much as 36 points behind um i hope we don't slip any further than we are now um but i'm not altogether hopeful that will be the case. Um, Nadine, one final question. Really appreciate you being on. Um, is he done? I mean, I was a massive fan, whatever Nick tells me. Is Boris Johnson done? Can you ever see the man coming back or is it over? So I think anybody who writes Boris Johnson off yeah. does so at their peril. So it's hard to get him to engage on the issues. He won't you won't talk about it. You know, if you if you say to him, you know, when you're coming back, what are you doing? Why aren't you saying this? Which I do all the time. But he's it's hard to get him to engage. I don't think he's done. I think he's in a period of reflection and hard work, actually. So um, he's working very hard on other things. But obviously, he's he's a so Boris Johnson, if he wanted to go into banking or some other some other means of earning money, he would have been a far richer than Rishi Sunak because he has this great ability of being an academic and a creative and having this, you know, personality and charisma. So if he'd gone into business or into banking like others did, he would have been mega, mega rich, but he didn't. He chose to go into politics because that's what's in his blood and that's what he's passionate about. Now, he is making money now and um, will it be enough to satisfy him or will he one day want to go back into politics? I, I don't think we've seen the last of him. What about you? Have we seen the last of you? Are you going to stand again or what? No, no, I'd never stand again to be an MP. No. Done. Well, listen, no, done. always lovely to have you on and thank you for airing your dirty dinner in public. That was a brilliant <laughs> line, by the way, Nick. Get that wash on, Nadine. And you can watch Friday night with Nadine this coming Friday at 8pm.